And the mayor, Kevin Knowles. Good morning, guys. City of Martinsburg Mayor Kevin Knowles. I'm, yeah, I, all these guys here that uh, hold such high standards, I don't know where I'm going to fall in this today. So You'll be right there with yeah, the I'm baby. Sure, I'm sure I can hang in there. Yeah. We're not worried about I that, got, Kevin. i got big shoulders. i got a big target. I'm, I'm good to go. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Well, let's get into it, man. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff to get to today. Uh, first and foremost, though, is uh, the city manager announced that he would be retiring in October. That's not what he announced. He announced it last week, but in October, I guess, is when the retirement is set to take effect. Mark Baldwin will be leaving the city of Martinsburg after uh, the longest tenured city managership in the history of the city, Kevin. Well, I think probably in the, the history of the state, if I were to take a look at it, because the city managers don't typically um, stay around a long time. And Mark has done some you know wonder, wonderful things in his tenure here in the city of Martinsburg. And he's also, he's also came from uh, other places in the northern panhandle where he... Sir, I, I believe his public service is about 30, over 35, maybe 37 years that he's he served uh, one municipality or another throughout the West Virginia. What will be the process to replace him? The process as it stands right now is uh, we, we, myself and the council, uh, have put out an um, internal memo um, identifying the needs for a uh, city manager, and we will put that out there till July 1st and uh, we will review those candidates and then at that point interview whoever we feel needs uh, would, would, would we would interview those those candidates and then uh, make a decision whether we would stick internally or uh, go to the outside and you know, keep, keep in mind we do have a, a city, an assistant city manager who has experience uh, with Ranson and, and other municipalities as a city manager. So, I mean, we're right, right there, we're looking at somebody that's uh, been doing the job day to day and, and you know, we'll have to see how that, that, that weighs out. I know you can't change this in a day. It takes a charter change. But is there any desire amongst the mayor's office or council people to change the system of government to a strong mayor and not necessarily a city manager type position in the long run? Uh, there, there has not been any of that discussion with city council. Do you see any advantages to that as the mayor? You know, that's something that uh, I would really have to look a lot more deeper into it. Uh, the, you know, the mayor today, is, as, as I said, I, I believe uh, I have a lot to say uh, with what goes on within the, uh, the city. The, the city manager, Mark, and, and, and Andy have included me in on all the conversations. And, and uh, you know, there are, probably are times that uh, there's conversations that's being had that I don't know about, but uh, eventually I do find out. So I think my... Uh, my ability to work with them closely is, a, is, 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 is right now very much on par. What is, what is, in a city manager system, Kevin, what is the power structure as it filters down? The, the mayor breaks the ties in city council as they vote. What, can the city manager overrule anything the council or the mayor wants to do, or is the city manager's job just simply to run the city and provide information to the council and mayor to make decisions? Uh, the city manager cannot overturn any uh, decision made by council. Uh, the mayor's job is to uh, represent the city and to uh, put together the agenda for each council meeting. So there's, there's really, uh, really nothing can go on that agenda unless uh, I approve it. And those are times that we sit down and have those discussions. And you know, there, there, there are things that I that I want to see and, and things that, that need to be done in the city that we all kind of work together on. So it's a, it's a very active discussion, to be putting together the agenda on any any agenda for the city. Uh, Kevin, every time I hear the term weak mayor, I cringe. I uh, do too. It, it, it drives me crazy. And, and we use that term, and, and frankly, I really don't know what it means. Uh, I've never read the city charter, and which is you know my fault, obviously. But h how would it be different if we change from this quote-unquote weak mayor position to a strong mayor position? What, what would be the, the, the chief change or what would we see that would be different? Well, you know, it, it, just like any business. I mean, you own some businesses. Uh, the the mayor then would become the CEO of the people. Everybody would be answering to the mayor directly uh, with the help of the uh, city manager or assistant city manager. Uh, there's a difference in fee structure for something like that, too. I mean, you sure. know, currently the mayor is uh, $600 a month uh, uh, salary, so it's uh, I don't think that you would be able to have a strong mayor or anybody that would want to be the strong mayor at that kind of uh, capacity, because some of us have to work 
other places to make a living and and you know some of some in the past some have have re, have had been retired and been able to do that but uh, uh there's a lot of there's a whole big process i would think just take looking at it to to uh change that over into a, a strong mayor position but you know there, there's not a lot of them uh, wheeling is not a uh, is not a strong mayor uh, city either and and i i don't I, in west virginia i, I don't I've never had that experience until I moved to West Virginia. I've never knew what they meant by a, a weak mayor system, and I don't, me personally, I don't consider myself a weak mayor. You know, when I hear that, uh, you know, I'm very active, I'm very involved, and other mayors have been too. That, that uh, you know, the process, uh, in the end, uh, the city manager does make a lot of the personnel decisions, but he, he, he the or the city manager has put together a team to be able to do that. So we have a very strong human resource uh, individual, uh, uh, Steve McBride, that they hired, which is was a big win for the city. You have a city manager and, and myself. We all sit down and discuss those uh, applicants, and just like we did with the, the, the police, uh, the, the um, chief of police. Do, do you know in the, in the charter to switch from a the system that's currently there to switch to a system where the mayor – was more of the CEO, is that something that would be could be done by a, a simple vote of the council, or is that something that would need to be brought before the electorate? Just out of curiosity, you know, you're asking a legal question that I can't answer. I know that the uh, the process for changing a, a charter is, is is it doesn't happen overnight. You right. know, you have to go through the whole thing, nitpick, and go through back and forth with the the attorneys and the attorneys come up with the final draft that final draft then i believe i don't believe you need the the um the city's uh, uh the city to vote on uh, my my suggestion would possibly to put that on a ballot if that were the case and and then move forward from there i want to make sure if anybody just tuned in uh kevin Knowles is not advocating a switch by the way this is just a line of questioning we started with the uh retirement of mark baldwin coming yes. up thank you for clarifying yes that, and, and kevin how i mean how because you know if someone oh, tuned yeah, in halfway no, through, I mean, yeah. yeah this is not Ke something yeah. i am advocating yeah. Kevin, kevin yeah kevin even stated that he's you know perfectly happy with how it is now yeah and how weak can the mayor really be? I mean, from the perspective that, that the council and the mayor, uh, I mean, it's, it's your job to hire the city manager. So, you know, as I look at things, you know, through the lens of being a business owner, if you're making the decision who's hired to do the job, you would think that there's some accountability uh, to the mayor and to the council from the city manager. So well, yeah, there, well, there is a, an accountability. I mean, the, the city manager, whoever it is, reports to the mayor and council. So, uh, you know, Mark Baldwin, Andy Blake, assistant city manager, they, they report to us, and it's up to the city council and the, the mayor to hold them accountable if there was something that needed to be held accountable for. But um, we have not had a situation like that. We haven't uh, to, to be able to do that. I think Mark has done a great job uh, for the times that, that he's been here. He's, he's brought the city forward. Uh, he's worked on many projects, so oversaw all the projects that – have increased the uh, uh, increased our uh, livability here in the city of Martinsburg. So, oh, Rob, oh, what I was going to say is it's similar to business, where you know you they you function sort of as the board of directors, the city manager does the the day to day, um, but serves at the pleasure of the mayor correct. and the board, and they oversee and any major decisions. From what you've said. You have these long discussions with Mark Baldwin, the assistants, and everybody there. So there's a great collaboration that you're hoping continues, and that's something you'll be looking for with whoever becomes city manager. Yeah, and let me say that uh, um, since I took over as mayor, I've been the privilege of council to appoint me as mayor, uh, there has been a whole change in dynamics in myself and, and in in uh, the city administration, we've been able to work a lot closer together than, than we have in the past. Because, to be honest, I you know I was a councilman at the time, and there was another mayor, so I I'm able to 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 understand. Uh, I have to give I do have to give Mark credit that uh, today I am a better mayor today as a direct result of his guidance and understanding of what he's done over the over these years than I was when I came in here. 
Well, Kevin, I think with your leadership, there may be that we can retire the term weak mayor because, again, it, it drives me crazy every time I hear it. If I was the mayor, it, it, it would really piss me off if I was the mayor and people <laughs> use the term weak mayor. Uh, Rob touched on— They don't say weak when they're looking at me. Though. Well, fair enough. <laughs> not, not in the same room, no. <laughs> fair enough. Rob touched on a little bit of the process of hiring the city manager, uh, and, and I look back at— and so I want to get delve into that a little bit more about how the process actually works. You look back at some of the recent hires that the city has made— um, you know, Chief Hummingbird, uh, Chief Richards, that was done through a national search. Um, it's my understanding that, that Chief Swartwood and, and Chief Givens was not done on a national search. You, you outlined a little bit that y your, your process is internal to begin with uh, to, to identify if you have candidates uh, within the system that are uh, interested in, the, in, in moving up or they have the qualifications. So it, just kind of give us an idea of, of why sometimes there's a national search and sometimes there isn't. Well, I, I think even when we did the uh, Chief Chief Gibbons, there was a, a national search. Was okay. So so we did have uh, we did have an opportunity to take a look at candidates from the outside and candidates from the inside. And then when we decided on that, we had our, we we had it down to some candidates from the outside and and did second interviews. We just didn't make a pick and and based on everything that we um, that we saw and where, the, and where the where the police department is as of today or as of that time, we felt that um, uh, Chief Gibbons was the the right fit. Um, I could personally tell you that uh, for me, Chief Gibbons, from the day that I met him 15 years ago, uh, he 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 impressed me as a perfect officer in my eyes. That. Uh, he would have interaction with somebody within the community, whether it be for legal matters or just stopping to say hi. And he treated everybody the same way, and he never forgot somebody's name. And, and I was very impressed with that. And I thought maybe that's because I was riding along with him, but I watched him for 15 years. So, I mean, um, Chief Gibbons, uh, the other, we had other candidates that were outside that, that were just, you know, they were very, very good too. Uh, and we probably, if we, what, what do you do when you bring in somebody from the outside and you don't know, you know, and then, then you know you pick the wrong guy. Then you, it takes a long time for them to to get get on track. So uh, we feel at this point, uh, you know, if that of course that doesn't work out, we we have the ability to to make those changes again if we feel that's necessary. I I don't see that necessary. I think Aaron, uh, Chief Gibbons is going to do a fabulous job. He's going to be able to be on this journey not only for. A, a four to five year period, which is typically what somebody from the outside wants to do, is work four or five years to move on. Uh, you know, uh, Chief Gibbons is in his 40s, and, and I think you're going to see a long term chief here. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree. Uh, I just make sure that it's important for the folks listening to in, in the city residents to understand that there is a kind of standardized process that you all use when you hire these top level positions. <laughs> do, you, do you anticipate? Um, uh, continuing to have a, an assistant city manager if if uh, this current city the the current assistant city manager were to move up is that a position that you would think that you would continue to fill for a long time Martinsburg did not have an assistant city manager but uh, recently they've they've obviously filled that position yeah well that that was on the uh, the books the back burners there for assistant city manager for about 10 years prior to any hiring uh, it was just something we could never fill due to our budget. Uh, we ended up filling, and I think we got a great candidate when we got Andy Blake. And and when a and if if Andy were to be the person to be chosen, I I can't tell you that that's that's going to happen. Or not. It's up to the city sure. council. Uh, that would be up to the, whoever the next city manager is. Uh, I would say that if there was a city manager that we chose from from the outside, or if it was somebody other than the assistant city manager currently, uh, that position stays. Uh, if Andy were to, if Andy Blake were to move up, uh, I would imagine that would be a discussion with him to see if that's the position he wants to name it or, or name it something else to to be able. Because you know, to be honest, he's been doing you know he's been doing a lot of that work. Mayor Kevin Knowles, our guest here on the program. Some of you know him as Knuckles Knowles as well here on the program. Kevin, let's talk about Lambert Park, Lambert Pool, and any progress that uh, the Parks and Rec is making in terms of making that uh, an available pool for this summer well I, I know parks uh, parks and rec are working diligently to try to find first the problems that they're having it's it's a it's an issue with the the piping as they see it right now and and I don't know where that is as of today but as the last conversation that I had is they're they're working very hard to find the problem hopefully it's just something that, that the piping could be fixed and they can be able to open up the pool this year uh, they won't know until they find out what the, the issues are uh, the city doesn't have a 
a say in, in, in what they do with Lambert Pool. That's under Parks and Rec. We, yes, we do funds it. So does so does the county fund some money for that too. But uh, how much does the city fund? You know, Corey Roman said it was a hun couple hundred thousand dollars, maybe. Well, I, you know that uh, that couple hundred thousand was was uh, some of that was ARPA money. So that's not, uh, you know, if you they they get some B and O tax and stuff like that from uh, Parks and Rec. But mm -hmm. uh, but that I guess maybe that's what he's including. I don't know the exact yes, number to be. To, to be honest with I you. think he said 545,000 I believe well, total yeah. between what the city gives and what comes from the, the hotel motel the tax, hotel motel tax. Um, it'd be nice to nice to have that extra pool and by the way I never refer to you as a weak mayor because I mean a you're a really good friend of mine but B the whole knuckles Knowles thing you know there's there's nothing weak about this guy this guy is out there everywhere every place every time anything that goes on in the city it's a, it's amazing. I've never seen a mayor like that. Thank you. So, I'm going to go back to Lambert Park Pool, and as the city does give money to this, and each year it seems to be there's another issue with Lambert Park Pool. Is what one? Do you have concerns? Do you have questions that need answered? Have you gotten answers to any questions in regards to this scenario? Well, I have to say that uh, Bob Williams stays very in very close contact with the. Uh, city officials to, to keep us updated as to what's going on and, and what is needed uh, at that point we you know we make decisions along the way as that as that comes in uh, but something definitely does need to be done I mean um, you know I hear a lot of a, a lot of issues about well both pools were were prepped the same time and why is Lambert you know those are two different areas two different uh, uh, Problems could be going on, and as they found the problems at Lambert, they had to make those decisions. They cannot open it. They they couldn't pass the health health inspection to to be able to do that with the pressure that they were getting. So, you know, the city went in and and utilized their cameras for the piping for them to go, and and it only I think it only went in 90 feet and it stopped. So there was some problems with the piping. So that's why they're digging it up, trying to figure out things. And from what my understanding is that you know, some of that stuff was done so long ago that uh you know uh, the way it was done it might 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 not have, is not up to what today's codes and and things are today is there going to be a point i mean i know on and off and i don't blame anybody with the rec department I mean, that pool is very very old and they they put band-aids on it for years because of funding issues and other things have there been any talks about you know sort of redoing the whole underpinnings of the pool at Lambert so this doesn't happen on an almost yearly basis I know it'd be expensive well I, I know that their 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 board and executive board has have conversations on different alternatives of what what they can or cannot do what they would like to see what they wouldn't like to see and and I, I think those things are going to come into play as they as they start checking and, and seeing if the the piping could be fixed and how fast it would be and how efficient it would be moving forward so there's a lot of things that's that that's on that scale to to do it i want to see something over there you know whether whether it's a, a pool whether it's a water park whatever it is something for the community over there i i, I believe that it's a uh, it's well needed and and you know some people tend to think that we forget about that north side. I, you know, I don't. I don't believe that. You know, I, I live, I live over on uh, the 1200 block of West Virginia Avenue, and I probably have some neighbors say that we forget about that end of town too. So, I don't buy into that stuff. We, we, we go where the where the where it's needed. Uh, what 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 the priorities are, and and, uh, and and we go in and we fix it. And when we fix it, we do it right. So, we don't want to be going in and doing a, a you know half. A, Close. You were close. That was. That was. Hey, I had to, almost had to pull out the plunger there. Scranton almost came out of him. Nah, hey. It almost. But, uh, I think you get my drift. But having having both <laughs> pools open is important. I I drove by a couple times. I drove by the War Memorial Park pool. I mean, it is packed. So I mean, it's it's well, I think imperative they to have both. So we got. It's not as full. Yeah, and I, I think if for, for it's it's not a permanent fix but uh, you know i think a good alternative is they've been able to do some busing to get the kids over there and get them back so i'm glad to see that that's happening but you know uh, that's a that is the the the, the elephant in the room what's going to happen to lambert pool and you know we're all working very diligently together and there's there's only, like i said there's only so much the, the the city doesn't have any uh any um power over that we do have some funding power but we don't have any decision making power over that councilman roman is listening he posted five hundred seventy thousand total hundred thousand allocation forty five thousand for lambert half of the hotel tax which is three hundred seventy five k and capital improvements of fifty k and uh councilman roman was on the program 
uh, basically said we got to get something for our money on this because every year with Lambert it's another issue. Yeah, and, and he's right. I mean, we need to get some answers and and move forward. You know, and right right now they have to find the answers to the questions that's there in front of them. Go ahead, Jason. I think you answered my question, but but I know there are some parks in, in the city. Ambrose Park comes to mind; it's close to my house. That is that is owned by the city of Martinsburg, but is managed by Parks and Rec. So, who is the actual owner of the property at Lambert Park? The the city owns the land. Okay, and uh, the uh, Parks and Rec is what maintains it and built to what it is today. So who? So the structure, the the, the pool, the 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 building that's on the property all that is owned by the city of Martinsburg. it's the city it's the city property yes okay that is that is managed by parks and rec yeah that's my understanding yeah. okay uh kevin about uh, one minute left is there anything you wanted to make sure the uh city residents knew about before you left today? well you know there's the city of martinsburg is moving forward real quick real fast and 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 you know keep your i just tell people keep your ears and your eyes open and and along with that comes you know different things that 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 people have questions about and, and one of the questions that came to me was uh, over the weekend was uh, what are we doing for our, our, our local people that can't afford uh, housing here in, or can't afford to even get an apartment with the rising costs and and you know my my answer to them is uh, you know we need to work on uh, you know the housing authority and, and them to try to expand their footprint and they haven't expanded their footprint since uh, 1982 and and for me personally I find that uh, you know, I find that odd that that footprint isn't even on the table. So, what could the housing authority do? Well, I mean, they have subsidized housing. Uh, they have rent-controlled housing, and and uh, right now there's a large waiting list for, for somebody to get uh, into housing. How does that work? Do they purchase the properties and then rent back, or what? Well, uh, currently, and maybe uh, Senator Barrett might know a little bit more about this than I do, but they. Uh, the properties they oh they own the properties that their uh, that their facilities are at and they built those properties and I believe it's built by federal money uh, but there has not been any monies available for that or any extension of any footprint since 1982. Is there land available? Do you think? To be well, able that's to that's my that's my that's why I, I say you know you know this should have been that was 1982. We've seen a lot of growth around here. There was a lot of land available. Yeah, you would have think that there would have been well even you know even 10 years ago or 15 years ago that there would have been a plan or or something put together at least have the land so that down the road they could build it. But I, at this point, I don't think they have any any land at all. Kevin, thank you so much for coming in today. Well, thanks for having me. That is Mayor Kevin Knowles.